Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 British one hit wonders. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. <laughs> For this list, we'll be ranking the British artists who saw huge chart success with a single song. We realise that some of these acts may have seen some minor single action on the lower end of the charts, but these groups should largely be defined by their one big hit. Do you love any of these one hit wonders? Do you feel they deserved better? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Pump up the volume, Mars. We've got to give it up for the Blink and You Missed It recording project known as Mars. This collaboration between the groups AR Kane and Colorbox and a pair of DJs named Dave Durrell and Chris McIntosh knew when to call it a day. The Pump Up The Volume single was the only thing released by the group, a massive electronic smash that was far more successful than that record's B-side, Anatina, The First Time I See She Dance. Mars knew how to capitalise on a driving, house techno beat, leading Pump Up The Volume to fill up the dance floors throughout 1987 and beyond. We guess that this project just knew to quit while they were ahead. Number 9. Wellerman, Nathan Evans There once was a ship that put to sea The name of the ship was a bully of tea The winds blew up her bowed up down oh, below my bully boys blow <gasps> It's fairly commonplace for songs to become popular and viral via TikTok. Wellerman from Nathan Evans was one such song, a cover of a traditional sea shanty that found an audience during the 2020 lockdown. Soon may the Wellerman come to bring us sugar and tea and rum. One day when the tongue is done, we'll take our leave and go. If sea shanties sound like they're a niche market, well, that's because they are. But Evans honestly does a solid job with the material. However, the singer and internet sensation hasn't, of yet, been able to replicate the lightning in a bottle response to Wellerman. Then again, who knows? Maybe the shanty talk trend will finally take a firmer hold within the pop culture zeitgeist. Soon may the Wellerman come to bring us sugar and tea and rum. One day when the tongue is done, we'll take a leave and go. Number 8. Turning Japanese, The Vapors The early days of MTV were chock full of British new wave acts, making a remarkable amount of headway across the pond. The Vapors were one of those groups, a Surrey quartet that struck it big with their smash 1980 single, Turning Japanese. Turning Japanese, I think of turning Japanese, I really think so. The not-so-subtle euphemism for self-pleasure was actually a breakup song complete with a stylish music video that made heavy rotation on MTV. The Vapors were proud of the tune, and even surmised that it might be difficult to top. As a result, it's been reported that the group initially tried to make Turning Japanese their second single. This didn't end up happening, and the Vapors' worst fears came true. They'd become one-hit wonders. But what a hit, right? Number 7. Teletubbies say eh oh, the Teletubbies. It's one thing to engage in the perfectly acceptable practice of singing along with one's children as they're watching a favourite TV show. However, it's another thing entirely for a song the likes of Teletubby Say Eh Oh to actually make the pop music charts. Startlingly, this was exactly what happened back in 1997, when this theme tune to the children's program hit number one for two weeks in a row. Teletubbies. Teletubbies. Say hello. Eh -oh. 
To be fair, reports at the time seemed to know exactly what was going on. This was striking while the iron was hot. Teletubbies say at all was a novelty hit, plain and simple. An earworm that existed to thrill little ones and annoy their parents. Number 6. Do You Really Like It? DJ Pied Piper and the Master of Ceremonies Do you really like it? Do you really like it? We're loving it, loving it, loving it! One Week Do You Really Like It? by DJ Pied Piper and the Master of Ceremonies hit the number one slot for seven days back in the spring of 2001. It quickly slid down the chart but did manage to retain some staying power for a few months before finally falling off. Represents our London town by pipers on the decks Rock the disco tech and I'm back in his set This one's for the heads out there The song is a relatively innocuous dance track A little shuffling, a little funky and dance floor friendly Do you really like it? Do you really like it? We're loving it, loving it, loving it Do You Really Like It? seemed to hit a nostalgic note for pop fans A light 90s throwback that wasn't out to set the world on fire Instead, DJ Pied Piper and the Master of Ceremonies just got in, hit number one, and quietly faded away back to obscurity. Number five, Remember Me, Blue Boy. Alexis, Lex Blackmore, only managed to release a single EP under the moniker of Blue Boy. Remember However, said EP from 1996 did manage to score a single hit the following year with the track Remember Me. The song is a repetitive head bopper that makes the most out of its Melina Shaw sample, combining that vocal with an easily danceable beat. There's a little funk and a little jazz here on Remember Me, twisted into a soulful form that's difficult to resist. Lex and Blue Boy never really reach these heights again, but it doesn't really matter because we'll never forget Remember Me. Remember me. I'm the one who had you, Number 4. Fire, the Crazy World of Arthur Brown. The career of Arthur Brown is one that's been highly respected within the worlds of psychedelic and progressive rock. However, he's also known as a one-hit wonder within the pop realm, thanks to this inexplicably weird jam from 1968. Fire opens up with some serious intent, as Brown howls to the depths and beyond about his status as the God of Hellfire. Then it's off to the races, with some swirling psychedelic organ and swelling horn arrangements to make fire truly one of a kind. For the full effect, however, you just gotta watch Arthur Brown perform the song live, or on a show like Top of the Pops. It's unbridled proto-shock rock madness. Number 3. Tub Thumping, Chawamba Wamba. Does one really need to know the lengthy history of Chawamba Wamba to appreciate their status as a one-hit wonder? No, not particularly. That said, the group was around for an astonishing 30 years prior to their dissolution in 2012. Before their one big hit, Tub Thumping, Chawamba Wamba was primarily known for their roots in the anarcho-punk rock scene of groups like Crass. This makes the success of their international dance smash even more unique, because the song actually possesses a bit of depth beneath the surface. Vocalist Dunstan Bruce acknowledged Tub Thumping during an interview with The Guardian, discussing its ties to Chawumba Wumba's ongoing lyrical themes of working-class struggle and resilience in the face of difficult odds. Not too bad for just another dance song, right? I get no Number 2. I'm Gonna Be 500 Miles, The Proclaimers When I wake up, well I know I'm gonna be I'm gonna be the man who wakes up next to you You know them, you love them They're Scotland's The Proclaimers And they're a proud one-hit wonder Thankfully, 
That main hit is a catchy one too, the infectious I'm Gonna Be 500 Miles from 1988. This is also despite the fact that the Proclaimers are actually a successful band, with some other well-performing singles and some truly devoted fans. But I would walk 500 miles and I would walk 500 more to be the man who walked a thousand miles to fall down at shoot However, it's nearly impossible to separate the group from this defining tune. Granted, this could be due to I'm Gonna Be's immediately recognisable video, or its inclusion on movie soundtracks. One thing's for sure, the Proclaimers have done just fine for themselves, despite whether or not anyone actually knows another one of their singles. Number 1. The One and Only, Chesney Hawks The world of movie soundtracks can be a great place to find some absolutely classic songs. It can also be a one-hit wonderland as well. Such was the case with the one and only from Chesney Hawks, a tune that first gained popularity thanks to its inclusion on the soundtracks to the 1991 films Buddy Song and Doc Hollywood. The tune actually feels more 80s than 90s, and this is no insult. The production is slick and layered, yet Hawk's strong vocal really shines through, in a sweet way. The one and only is well composed too, featuring some smart key changes and a super big sounding chorus. It's unabashed pop rock with a melodic heartbeat that's impossible to resist. We'll say it, Chesney Hawks deserved more number one hits. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo UK and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.